la creaste para ser fecunda la tierra para favorecer nuestros cuerpos con el frescor y la limpieza. La hiciste también en el momento de misericordia librar al pueblo de la esclavitud y al pecar con ella su ser en el desierto. Por los profetas la revelaste como signo de la nueva alianza que quisiste sellar con los hombres. Y cuando Cristo descendió a ella en el Jordán, renovaste nuestra naturaleza pecadora en el baño del nuevo nacimiento. Que esta agua, Señor, avive a nosotros el recuerdo de nuestro bautismo. Y nos haga participar en el gozo de nuestros hermanos bautizados en la Pascua por Jesucristo nuestro Señor.
are different work, different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. The sequence you're going to find in English on page 60, in Spanish on page 60, but the sequence you're going to find Empezando en página 61. Ven Dios, Espíritu Santo, y envíos desde el cielo tu luz para iluminarnos. Ven y abre los ojos, luz que tú tienes para los ojos, la dor de los ojos, cuente de los ojos, amarlo de su frente de la paz. Receive the Holy Spirit. 
whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The second time, the second time we had a revival, the second time that Jesus says, peace be with you. Don't you wonder why? The first time, peace be with you, well, that, that's a greeting. And you would think when Jesus greets us, peace be with you, his peace would be upon us. But he says it a second time. And you have to wonder, is he trying to calm them down? Is there something that they're too excited to see him and he has to calm them down? Peace? Peace be with you? Is if all chaos was going to break open? That's what it would seem like. Except, how, how many of you are around? Well, you don't really have to raise your hand if you want to admit to it, but how many of you are around in PE days? Victory in Europe day for, for you youngins. When World War II was over. And there was peace. Was everybody calm? The rejoicing flowed everywhere, out on the streets, everybody was celebrating. They couldn't be contained, people were so happy, knowing that the war had ended, that, that a new era had begun, that we embarked upon something new. You see, peace, peace is not something that calms us down. Puts us to sleep. Makes everything okay. We talk about peaceful halls, or peaceful classrooms, or, or peaceful workplaces where there's, there's no trouble, there's no violence. But when we really have peace, when we really know something different than conflict and struggle, and pain and suffering, when peace is really part of our lives, there is a tremendous joy, a tremendous celebration. And so that first time that greeting, peace be with you, well, that only started it, didn't it? And in order to increase that sense of celebration, in order to increase our awareness that this truly is the Lord risen from the dead, he says it again, peace be with you. And then, and then he puts that peace to work. Isn't that what happened in World War II? As soon as there was peace, we had to put it to work to rebuild, to reform, to refashion, to help those who suffered so much. And in the same way, when we receive the peace of the Lord, we need to put it to work. We need to rebuild, reform, refish, and first our lives, and then the world we live in. We need to share that peace. We need to bring it forward. We need to announce it and proclaim it to everyone. And so he sends them out. As the Father has sent me, so I send you with this great peace, this celebration, this joy in your hearts, the second time. Go out. Go out into the world with a different understanding. Don't simply proclaim the kingdom of God, but live the kingdom of God. Be the kingdom of God. Bring peace and pardon, forgiveness and hope to all God's people. That's the greeting of Pentecost. The 
greeting of Easter. The greeting of Christians. That's what we're meant to do. To receive the Lord's peace and with such joy to be overfilled with the love of God and bring it out to the world around us. The second time. Why is it that John had to write about the spirit being given to the apostles on the night of Easter? His was the last gospel, so we can presume that he knew something about Luke's gospel. Written nearly 15 years before, at least as far as we can tell, maybe, maybe only five years, but he probably knew something about Luke's gospel. And Luke in his gospel, he's, he's very cautious, isn't he? He begins the gospel saying, many others have tried to sit down and account. And so I'm going to, you know, as best as I could, I discovered the facts and I'm presenting them to you. And he mentions a person's name, Theophilus. This is, this is the account of, of what I received from hearing about it from the disciples. So Luke was not one of the apostles, but he checked around, he checked his sources to try and present everything in a very orderly fashion for the Christian community. So much so he wrote two volumes, the Gospel of Luke and Acts of the Apostles. And it isn't until that second volume, the Acts of the Apostles, that he presents that day of Pentecost, that day of receiving the Holy Spirit. And he talks about this strong, driving wind, the power of the Spirit, pushing the disciples out of their room, out into the world. A wind, this noise so loud that others had to come and rush in to find out what's going on, to hear the good news, to proclaim, to, to hear the gospel proclaimed to them. But if John is right, and John is an apostle. He was there. And even if he didn't write the gospel himself, we, we can presume that somehow they ascribe the gospel's name to John because his followers or people who spoke to him knew the gospel from him. If John is right, the Spirit came to the apostles on the night of Easter, on the night of the resurrection. So where was the power? Where was the strength? Where was the glory that pushed them out of the room? Why the second time? They needed to receive. Absorb. Understand. Embrace. The gospel message, the, the Pentecost message, if you will, in John is this very, very short, but very powerful. He breathes on them. He creates them. He gives them a mission, one that is intimately connected with his, which we might miss. We might miss it. We just had the answer. We might be a church that just praises the Holy Spirit and say, God's Spirit has come upon us and we all have the power of God in us. But no, John connects it very clearly, very intimately in our relationship, our knowledge of Jesus Christ. He breathes upon them. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Our mission can never be separated from Christ. We must always be connected, united, devoted to the Lord Jesus. Our mission means nothing if it does not follow the mission that Jesus himself had. Receive the Holy Spirit. And then, something very strange, something very confusing, something wonderful. Those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven them. Now the new translation says those whose sins you retain, but 
That's so technical. I, I, I prefer the old translation. Those who sin to be hold bound. Because isn't that what happens when, when sin is not forgiven? It's like you've been bound up. Those who sin to hold bound, they are held bound. Tied down by sin. Well, if you remember, the gospel isn't, isn't that the power that belongs only to God? Isn't that how the Pharisees challenged Jesus himself? You can't forgive sins. That's blasphemy. And of course, he proves that he can forgive sins. And then, maybe to some Pharisees in the height of blasphemy, but to Christians, in the ultimate example of God's love, He shares that power to forgive with us, with the church. So that wherever we walk, wherever we proclaim the Lord Jesus, sin is forgiven. God's peace is known. Our pardon is complete. And we walk Free, not held bound, but free. The glory of Jesus Christ. That's why there's a second counting of the Spirit coming. In Acts of the Apostles, while I'm on confusing things, they list the many peoples who have come from many places to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, which simply means the 50 days of the Feast of the Harvest. And in celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, all these people from all around the world have come to Jerusalem to celebrate. And so they list them out. We're Parthians, we Elamites. I looked them up. There's a Parthian Empire at the same time as the Roman Empire. Not nearly as big, certainly not nearly as, as powerful or as effective in history, I guess you might want to say, or change in the course of history, but the Romans and the Parthians fought up against each other, fought a number of wars. Sometimes the Parthians won, sometimes the Romans won. The Parthian Empire stretched from the end of the Roman Empire in the east through what is now Iran and Afghanistan and out further east to almost the border of what was then the Han Empire, the Empire of China. Now the Chinese, they call their empire the or their land, the Heavenly Kingdom. The Romans were more practical, more earthly minded, building cities and civilization and things that they did. Didn't give such grand title to their own empire, but to their kings they did. The Parthians, on the other hand, remained sandwiched in between them. And they called their rulers.
what we hold dear, what we think is so important in our lives. What would cause us to stop and listen to someone else? What kind of noise do we need to hear before we'll run to the feet of the apostles and hear the good news? What kind of struggle or pain or suffering or war must we endure until we learn to embrace the peace of Christ? How long must we look? How many civilizations must come and go? And as you go through the list of the various peoples, you see their history. How many civilizations must we endure until we realize there is only one king? Until we proclaim one Lord in our lives? Until we bring that peace of Christ to the world we live in? And do not allow them to convince or connive or contrive us to think that something else, someone else, somewhere else holds the hope that we find in Jesus Christ. As I, were, as I was preparing for this sermon, the thought came to me, I hope it was the Lord, the thought came to me that there's a forgotten phrase, one that we don't pay attention to. And I look through the readings and trying to think, well, which ones? There are a number of them actually that seem to just be let go of in these readings. We like the, the coming of the Spirit, we like the tongues of fire, we like the preaching in many languages, we like that sense of forgiveness. What seems to be those things that, that aren't quite there, that aren't quite paid attention to? Y si es un saludo del Señor, pues 
¿Por qué queremos la paz en la casa? No, no queremos mucho ruido, o, no, mucha destrucción de, de, la, de la casa, simplemente que tiene la paz. Por cuando alguien está perturbado, tenemos en la paz. Pero la paz del Señor no es una paz como nosotros pensamos regularmente, pensamos que la paz es de no tener conflicto. La paz es algo más poderoso que eso. Porque la paz del Señor nos anima, nos da una alegría. Como nos dije en los días después de la Segunda Guerra Mundial, cuando todo el mundo estaba celebrando la paz, la victoria. Nosotros cuando celebramos la paz del Señor, celebramos con victoria, con, celebramos con la gloria de Dios. Pero también cuando recibimos la paz, recibimos una tarea. Con la Segunda Guerra Mundial, tuvimos la tarea para reivindicar, reconstruir los edificios de ayudar los necesitados, los necesitados en las naciones destruidas por la guerra. Y como cristianos tenemos la tarea de ayudar, de renovar, de reformar, de recrear las vidas destruidas por el pecado. Recibimos una tarea para celebrar el Pentecostés, para celebrar la paz del Señor en nuestras vidas. La segunda vez, Él nos ofrece la paz para enviarnos, para empujarnos al mundo, como en el día de Pentecostés. La segunda vez, en la Biblia tenemos dos veces cuando los apóstoles reciben el Espíritu Santo y el Evangelio de San Juan está escrito después del Evangelio de San Lucas al mínimo de cinco años pero probablemente casi de 15 años después pues ¿por qué Juan cambió como los apóstoles recibieron el Espíritu Santo? Lucas trató de, de escribir correctamente, sin equivocados, la historia de los apóstoles y empezó su evangelio escribiendo. Muchos han tratado de uh, escribir una historia de los eventos que pasaron entre nosotros. Y por eso yo estudié y voy a presentar a ti, Teofilo, esta historia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Él usó dos volúmenes, ¿no? Dos libros, el Evangelio de Lucas y también Hechos de los Apóstoles para presentar su historia de Cristo, su historia de la Iglesia. Pero Juan era un apóstol. Lucas no. Juan estaba allí en la noche de la resurrección. Estaba en el cuerpo. El Señor sopló sobre ellos para recibir el Espíritu Santo. Y el día de Pentecostés es la segunda vez. En la primera vez en San Juan, el Señor sopló sobre ellos como en Génesis. El Señor sopló sobre el pueblo de la tierra para formar a Adán, para crear a Adán. Y el Señor Jesús recrea, nos recrea para ser un nuevo hombre, una nueva mujer en su gloria. Somos recreados en nuestra fe, recibiendo el aliento de Dios, la vida del Señor. Y también nos da la fe una misión que está 
está unida en la misión del Señor Jesús. Porque siempre, si no estamos unidos con Cristo, no somos cristianos. En Pentecostés, en entre los apóstoles, es posible de pensar. Los apóstoles recibieron el Espíritu Santo, recibieron el poder del cielo, por eso no necesitaban de predicar a Jesucristo, simplemente de predicar de, de la gloria de Dios, de la gloria del Espíritu Santo. Pero están de votos a Cristo, unidos con Cristo. Su misión es de Cristo, por eso proclamaron Cristo al mundo. esta tarea de continuar la misión del Señor y a la gente la gente que escuchar el ruido del Espíritu Santo descendiendo sobre los apóstoles el gran ruido que, que tem, tembló la casa vinieron de muchos países ¿no? los barcos los menes, el amites. Yo chequeé dónde está, dónde estaba en estos países. Los barcos tuvieron un imperio, imperio entre el imperio de China, y en China se llama su, su reinado, por su reino, el, uh, el reino de los cielos. Y el Imperio Romano, que era un poco más practicado. Pero los pactos le llamaron su, propia, su propio reino, sus reyes. Los reyes, o el rey de los reyes. Los menes tuvo cuatro clases de personas líderes en su reinado. El cuarto era los magos. Los magos. Pues encontramos en esta lista que los, la gente del rey de los reyes murieron para escuchar de un buen rey. El Señor Lucas. Los magos. Nos 
principio del de cumpleaños y quiere decir de la iglesia católica es el principio de nuestra vida nuestra relación con el Señor y cuando estamos conectados con Pentecostés cuando estamos conectados con el Espíritu Santo vivamos para la gloria de Dios para siempre So you write in that amount. You don't have to make a payment today, but you write in that amount, and then you subtract. 
subtracting from the total, and the next line, you put in whatever you're going to, again, whatever is left for the next three years. Finally, it asks for how many years, just write in three, please. Okay, I'll write in three. If, it, if you pay it off in less, God bless you. If you need more time, God bless you. <laughs> but just write in three, it just makes it easier for the accounting purposes than worrying about one, two, two and a half. So, uh, in the second video, va a poner, si va a hacer un pago, por favor de poner la cantidad del pago que va a hacer hoy, hoy mismo. Si no va a pagar nada hoy, está bien, puede escribirse y el total que va a pagar en tres años. Finalmente, la línea dice cuántos años y dice abajo uno a tres, escribe tres solamente, por favor. Es más fácil, tiene tres años. Si necesita más tiempo, está bien. Si puede pagar en menos tiempo, gracias a Dios. No se preocupa, escribe tres, es más fácil. Uh, de preocuparnos con diferentes uh, niveles, diferentes años. Ok, after that, we're going to ask you to simply sign it and date it. So sign your name and date it at the, at the line below. So, después de esto, por favor de firmar y escribe la fecha. La fecha hoy es 6, 8, 14. 8 de junio en uh, 2014. So, the date today is 6, 8, 14. Y después de esto, por favor de escribir su nombre con letras que podamos leer bien. So, the next line, please print your name. And then the following line, your address. Don't forget your apartment number or the floor number if you live in an apartment. And then also the city, state, zip code. Su dirección, no olvide el apartamento, por favor. También incluye la ciudad, el estado, zona postal. The following line.
You're going to fill out that bottom part, and you're going to mark how much you want to take out from your bank account, and again, for how many months. Normally, that'd be 36 months, so, you know, $40 per month for 36 months. And then you need to include a check, and you sign the check, but write on the check in nice big letters, VOID. So you cover over the rest of the check. So it says VOID, V-O-I-D. So, si va a usar un cuenta bancaria, por favor de usar la parte de atrás, abajo de, de la tarjeta. Y este dice, a favor de uh, cargar, o a favor de tomar de mi cuenta, y cuánto es uh, la, cantidad, la cantidad de su pago mensual. Y, por ejemplo, 40 pesos mensualmente. Y por cuántos meses, usualmente es 36, es 3 años. Y necesita firmar un cheque y también escribe en letras grandes sobre el cheque voy D O I D desválido y no puede usar el cheque por otra cosa ok si va a usar tarjeta de crédito a favor de llenar la forma arriba la parte de arriba y este en la primera caja la primera cajita es si quiere hacer un pago total una vez si quiere hacer pagos mensualmente, esa es la segunda cajita. So, if you go to the, for the uh, credit card portion, you fill out the top half of that card, and the very first box is if you're going to make one payment entirely charging your credit card. So, you put in the amount, it's one payment, and you mark the kind of card. So, marque el tipo de tarjeta de crédito, y necesita su número también de tarjeta de crédito. Si va a usar pagos, va a hacer pagos en, uh, por los 36 meses, por favor de marcar la segunda quejita, cuánto es el pago y por cuántos meses, usualmente 36, y también el tipo de la tarjeta de crédito. Con, el tarje con la tarjeta de crédito en su mano, por favor de escribir en la línea grande el nombre que está escrito en la tarjeta de crédito. Y también al lado el código postal, la zona postal donde recibe esta tarjeta. Okay? So the uh, first line, first log line with your credit card account, please write down your name as it appears on the credit card and then the billing address, the billing zip code, so where you receive the bills. In the second line, please write down the number of the credit card. So that would be normally a 16 digit number for most credit cards, it's 15 digits for American Express. And then also the security code, the CVV code, which you usually find on the back of the card. It's a three-digit code. Yeah. If it's uh, American Express, it'll be on the front of the card. It's four digits. And then to the right of that uh, expiration of the card, the month and year. In la segunda línea grande es el número de la tarjeta de crédito. Usualmente es 16 numerales. Y si es American Express, hay 15. Y también el código de seguridad, el CBB, usualmente se encuentra atrás de la tarjeta, hay tres digitales, uh, en American Express es en el frente de la tarjeta y hay cuatro digitales. Y la fecha de expiración para la tarjeta, el mes y el año. La segunda o la tercera línea es de firmar como firma su tarjeta de crédito. Y la fecha de hoy mismo que es 6, 8, 14. And finally, on that third line there, sign your name as you sign on the credit card and today's date, 6, 8, 14. If you want to use Give Central, simply write Give Central on it. And then you need to go away to Give Central to make your payment, to set up your payment. We can't do that for you. So, si va a usar Give Central, por favor de escribir simplemente Give Central y Usted necesita ir al que centro para hacer su pago. Nosotros no podemos uh, tomar de su, de su cuenta en el centro. Ustedes necesitan decidir cuánto y por cuánto tiempo. Ya es todo. Por favor de uh, cumplir, poner una sobre y los mujeres van a colectar otra vez. So, that's everything. If you filled out the card, please put it inside the envelope. Put the payment inside or check inside if you need to. And then the ushers are going to collect it. So please raise your hand if uh, you need to have the card collected. But what is the mano? See how you can buy and see that's the seat that I think what I've got.
¿ok? Y nosotros vamos a continuar con la misa. Again, discúlpeme que era necesario. La mayoría de ustedes, yo sé que han hecho su compromiso. Muchas gracias. Y necesitamos de animar al resto de la parroquia de participar también en esta campaña. So, I, I know many of you have already made your pledge. Thank you. You're very generous. And we have to uh, encourage the rest of the parish to make their pledges as well so that everyone participates in this. Thank you.
pray my sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours are the example of God the Almighty Father.
which we make to you also for those whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal death. this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. But this is my body, which will be given up for you. Del mismo modo, acabar la cena, toma este cáliz glorioso en sus santos, venerables manos, dando gracias de mí y los dioses sus hijos diciendo tomar y beber todos de él. Porque ese es el cáliz de mi sangre, sangre de antes en nueve, eterna que será derramada por vosotros y por todos para el perdón de los pecados. Hace la suerte con acción mía. Este es el sacramento de nuestra fe.
siempre y siempre con ustedes. Sí.
That's early in the morning, starts at 7 o'clock in the morning down by the lake. Information's in the bulletin. Uh, is Ken here? No? Okay. Uh, I think he'll be here next weekend to take, uh, to take the names if you want to sign up. And then later on in the evening, we will have the 130th anniversary of the parish. We hope to announce the final total for the campaign at that anniversary celebration. The anniversary will be a 5.30 p.m. bilingual mass, uh, celebrated by Bishop Rojas, and then after the mass, we'll have a big celebration in the Tealy Center. So, uh, your invitation is in the bulletin. You're not getting one in the mail, so use this one. Call yourself invited. Make sure you call us and let us know how many people are coming so we can order enough food. Uh, okay? So, uh, los dos cosas que van a los dos eventos de 21 de junio, la caminata contra la in uh, Seca del Lago, patrocinado por el British Chicago Food Depository. Ellos es uh, eh, la dispensa de comestibles para todo el, el, el área de Chicago. Nosotros participamos con ellos para recordar fondos. Cada uh, persona que camina recibimos dos, 12 uh, pesos por la persona y también cada persona trata de recibir uh, uh, fondos uh, patrocinados por sus amigos, familiares y también recibimos un premio de uh, 20% de todos sus fondos recordados uh, para poner en una cuenta. Nosotros usamos este para comprar los alimentos que nosotros damos a los necesitados en nuestra área. Este es muy temprano la ma mañana, a las 7 de la mañana, cerca del lago. Más tarde, a las 5 y media, vamos a tener a uh, nuestra misa para la celebración de nuestro aniversario, 130 años, hay un devoto San Cristo, y el obispo Rojas estará aquí para celebrar con nosotros, y después de la misa, bilingüe, a las 5 y media, vamos a tener una celebración en el Centro TV. Finalmente, vamos a tener una peregrinación a Holy Hill, a la Loma Santa, en Wisconsin, a... Uh, hay información, este es el 26 de julio, hay más información en el boletín. And finally, we have a pilgrimage coming up on July 26th to Holy Hill, Wisconsin. And uh, information about that is in the bulletin. And the, our, let's, the, let's congratulate uh, how many graduates we've got. I, mean, I know we've got a number of graduates, but the, all the servers, plus we agree.